Welcome to this month's episode of Zero Now. I'm Joe Savati. This month, we're talking all about work-life balance and what you can do to improve it. Joining me is Paul Meisner, a Platinum Zero partner. Paul, and one of our earliest partners, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you very much for having me. Why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? You're a man of many talents, and what is it that you do? Yeah, thanks, Joe. Run uh, three businesses, got an accounting firm, Five Ways Group. I came up on 10 years of running my own uh, accounting firm, 100% cloud, yeah. uh, and got to zero platinum. Uh, finalist for this year's awards, which is very exciting. Congratulations. Also run online training, free to mentoring mm-hmm. uh, for small accounting firms, just giving them uh, some tips and tricks about my journey and also a podcast from the trenches. So a bit of everything. You know, there's many paths people can take and none of them are right. But you were saying, you know, you, you chose to you know, set up your business and, and follow what it is that you want and not necessarily having to chase growth or growing internationally. And it really made me think that you don't always have to be about um, growing, growing, growing and getting bigger, mm. but getting bigger through being very selective. Um, and so how have you sort of taken that journey? I think work-life balance for me is understanding where you want to be. Yep. You know, there's, there's so many different businesses and everybody is at different stages in their their journey, mm-hmm. where, they, uh, where they've come from, where they want to go. So I think what I've often found is if you've got to find out what your definition of balance is, you've got to find out what your definition of, of success is. Um, and that's different for everyone. You know, there's no, there's no right or wrong. And there was a crossroads uh, in our firm where it was, do we go big and yeah. chase the, the global uh, ambitions or do we understand where, where we're at, uh, stick to what we, what we like, um, and ultimately for me, that was just, yeah, small accounting firm, mm. small staff, pretty much stay local. I mean, mm. we've got global clients, but yeah. you know, really um, growing the efficiency, yeah. <laughs> growing yeah. the profit, not necessarily just just the size and focusing uh, a little bit. We'd had that discussion, uh, Joe, when uh, when my first son was born. Yep. Um, it was at that part of my life as well. So, you know, I think that in terms of priorities of work-life balance is, is a real shift. For you, you know, our kids are similar age. That's probably why we're having the conversation <laughs> is... Um, how did you then choose to find you know, your purpose or, or what it was that you wanted to, to sort of chase, so to speak, to, to get that balance? To understand balance for me yeah. it was all about understanding and, and being, I guess, honest about the priorities. And the yep. priorities for me never were family. Um, yeah. you know, I suppose it isn't until you, until you have children. Time for me is, I mean, time for everyone is finite. Yeah. So you and whatever work you have, however much works on, it will largely fill it. So what for me I tried to focus on was trying to prioritize that time that wasn't work yeah. and try to condense the available hours that I had to get the work done rather than it being sort of open-ended, oh, well, um, work comes first and everything else comes second. You know, it was really trying to set those boundaries of time and, and say it started for me with um, committing to being home one day a week yeah. uh, with my son originally and then, and then my daughter when she came along and really just blocking that out of the diary. And what that did was really interesting because... It gave me the balance, but it really gave me um, the, the need to make everything else more efficient. So I guess, what are some of the tools you use that helped you sort of move towards that goal? The number one tool clearly was the technology. Yeah. Um, based off zero 10 years ago, I, I, I saw that uh, come to Australia and, and really decided to, um, yeah, to, to make that the cornerstone, I guess, of the business and introduce it to a lot of other small business owners. For me, you only get the balance by being able to create efficiency right. to get you out of the office or away from, from work. Um, I've turned off all my notifications mm. on my uh, lap. I used to have a, a well, I still have a laptop, an iPad and a phone, yeah. and they used to bing, 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 bing. So I've turned off all those notifications. So I think it's something like 20 minutes after you get a notification or an interruption that you're um, inefficient for. So turned off all of that, which, which helped me increase the efficiency while I was at work, but also I've uh, started something with, which is um, on your iPhone, you've got downtime yep. settings. I showed you Joe before. Yeah. Um, so my phone goes dark most nights. I'm not 100% great at it, but most nights from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. it goes dark. And, and what that is, it's just reminding me that it's that get off your phone, yeah. be present at home. Yeah. Because one of the greatest challenges I've had is, is trying to get balance by doing both. Yep. You know, I think remote working, which I've done, lucky to have done quite a lot of, I've gotten to a trap of trying to be at work and at home, yeah, <laughs> and yep, you I've end up not too, doing, definitely. and you end up not doing it either properly. So it's really trying to make sure that you've got that, you know, where it's a different hat, a different room in the house, you know, some trigger that says I'm I'm at, I'm at work even though I'm not physically there, and now I'm at home, and and turning off that phone, especially as children get older, Joe, yep. and uh, and they uh, do become more aware of of things and what you're doing. 
um, it's really important. So there are a couple of tools I've used. The cloud accounting tools in Zero. you know, you've talked about how it's helped you. How do you see it helping yourself as well as your relationship with your clients? Look, obviously it's had a profound impact given I've built my business uh, around around the software, not mm -hmm. only Zero, but also cloud technology. I yeah. think for most of us, we're supposed to say that the client experience was better and mm -hmm. it changed the lives. And, and that's all true. For me, it's the internal efficiency. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that I went from 10 years ago, uh, sitting at a desk, wearing a suit, filling in a timesheet, yep. not being able to get away from a, a desktop to being able to work globally, yep. take the family overseas, work on a beach. You know, So I think, um, and still run uh, an efficient and effective business. Yep. For me, it's been totally about the, the freedom, um, freedom of time and place, it can work anywhere, anytime. How do you know when you've gotten your work-life balance right, so to speak? I don't think you could ever get it right, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Um, I think it is a, a constant work in progress. You know, and, and as you, you move through both your work journey, um, the seasonality of work, you know, I think the balance changes. Yeah. Um, you go through periods where you, you have to rebalance because work gets busier or family gets mm -hmm. busier and, and, and you're pulled one direction or the other. I think for me, the importance is to always understand what your balance is. Mm -hmm. If you, you can never come close to getting it right if you don't know what you're trying to achieve. And I think we, we often are in a cycle of being busy. Yep. You know, uh, we, we, we meet people in the street, we talk to people, how are you, I'm busy. And it's almost like a badge of honor. I've always tried, at least internally, to be about efficiency. Mm. You know, as long as you're being efficient. So for me, um, where I feel like it's not getting too bad or it's close, close to being, uh, being in the right spot is where I'm efficient and effective both at work and present at home and getting some time and I'm not stuck uh, too many hours working. But it's a constant struggle. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. I look forward to our continued conversations. You're welcome. Joining me are Bindi Edelman and Jane Nosworthy, the Joint Heads of Diversity Inclusion at Zero. Bindi, Jane, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Joe. So, Jane, great to get your take. As you know, you've uh, come into this role in the last three months, and mm. great to hear your perspective. Yeah, I guess the the thing for me is that there's no division really. There's no invisible wall between us, our work lives, and our personal lives. Mm. Um, we all and we want to be able to feel that we can do our best work, and that our workplace is going to support us to do that yeah. by making sure that we have the space that we need, both physically and emotionally, to um, you know to balance the various responsibilities and priorities we have outside of work and still do our you know, really great work yeah. when we're here. Could you uh, tell us about some of the things that we do at Zero that we try and help to create that work-life balance? One of the key things we, that we've established are a set of guidelines around yeah. flexible working to really give people a clear understanding of what they need to do if they want to set up a regular flexible working arrangement. That gives them a process to follow and encourages them to um, speak to their managers who will then talk to our people experience team and help them set that up in a way that works for both them and for Zero. Great. So, you know, you both, of course, take advantage of the flexible working. And can you maybe share your experiences of how that works for you directly and how you came to that? Yeah, so we're really excited to be job sharing yep. um, our role as Head of Diversity and Inclusion. Um, so Bindi works three days and I work two days. Um, and for me personally, that gives me um, exactly the right balance that I need to feel like I can be my best self, mm. both at work and then at home with my family and all the other things that I do outside of work as well. I'm really passionate about flexible working because I feel like it's been also my own lived experience because mm -hmm. I think like my oldest, I've got four kids and juggling all of that in a busy home life has meant that I've needed that flexibility and my oldest is 15, my youngest is eight and I think I would not have been able to sustain the jobs that I've had if I wasn't afforded the flexibility that I've been given and it's just, you know, it's enabled me to have the most fulfilling career and do great work and just feel really inspired but also to give back to my employer because I think that when you give people that, that, that understanding and that support, it, it really just comes back to you in spades in terms of really appreciating the fact that you've been given that, that, that opportunity to sort of balance your own needs. There's always all sorts of different ways you can think about uh, flexible working. Do you have any tips for maybe any of our customers or zero partners at home that they could try and start you know, 
testing the waters on. We were just reflecting before we actually filmed this to say it's so interesting because if you think, if I think about the people that I know in my life and particularly some of the customers that we talk to, that a lot of them started their businesses actually because they wanted more flexibility and that was their way of getting that back. But I think the challenge is that once you're running your own business, it's sort of like, you know, the buck stops with you and you kind of feel like you have to do it all. And sometimes you, you, that balance just gets out of whack. So I think it's about remembering like what brought you to that place to begin with and actually trying to stay true to that and, and tapping into the benefits that, that offers you. So lots of tricks. I mean, simple things like having the boundaries in play. I don't know, Jane, if you want to talk to that yeah. a bit more too. Yeah. Well, I think we all find it hard, whether we're, you know, working for a company like Zero or having a small business. It is hard. You know, our work life and our personal life can really bleed together, particularly with the, you know, availability of technology that keeps us all connected all the time. It's going to work differently for every single person, but perhaps some things that people might like to try and do are that, you know, those boundaries around when they're using their devices, when they're being connected, um, trying to make sure that they prioritise the time for friends and family, the things that are important to them as well. Uh, Work-life balance is really important, but you know, what are the benefits to a company like Xero or any of our customers to really invest in that for the company and their employees? Well, one of the things that we know from research is that people really value um, flexibility. And in fact, our own internal survey um, tells us that that's something that our zeros particularly value and appreciate the opportunity to work flexibly. Um, and also that people won't necessarily stay at a company if they don't feel that they have the opportunity to do that. So in terms of both attracting and retaining talent, it's super important to us at zero. Yeah, it's such a good point. And I think the experience also, once you're in a workplace, the research also shows that it you know, increases productivity, engagement, that people feel much more um, inspired and satisfied at work when they actually have that flexibility because they know that you know, if things happen outside of work or life jumps in and they have to do things that take them away from work, they've got that balance in play. And of course, in terms of a diversity and inclusion perspective, that it really drives that inclusive workplace environment. How do you know when you found that work-life balance or what does that goal look like for each of you? Such a good question. I mean, I think you know that's the challenge for all of us. And for me, it's definitely a work in progress, but I know that when I feel like I'm not just surviving the day to day, but I actually feel like I'm enjoying it, I'm thriving, I'm flourishing, those things. And I think looking at all the aspects of my life, things like getting enough rest, feeling like I'm invested in my relationships and, and making the time for that is really important for me, but also doing the things that inspire me and that I have time for that. And I'm prioritising that also in my life. So feeling that all those sorts of elements are in play as well as work. Great. Jane, how about yourself? I really agree with all of that. And for me, it's about thinking of this in a way about the seasons of life. So at certain different stages of my life, I will want different levels of flexibility. And I think I will, I will know when it's right at those particular times because I'll feel like things are in flow. Everything's kind of going as it, as it should. Um, and I don't necessarily need to worry that the way that I want to balance it all today might not be the way I want to balance it in five years or 10 years when my kids are older and I have different priorities. So looking at it as over a kind of a lifespan of a career rather than worrying about the particular arrangements that I've got in place at any given time. That's really interesting because it also gives you a lot of license to be um, kind to yourself, so Absolutely. to speak. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's not like, oh, I'm not getting this right today, but it's like, oh, well, this feels right now. And then in a yeah. few years times, I might feel different than when kids or you want to travel more or whatever it is okay. that makes you want to do that flexibility. Yeah. Well, uh, Bindi and Jane, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a really interesting conversation. Thank you for having Thanks, us. Thanks, Joe. My pleasure. I'm really excited to be joined by Bill Zarbos today, the owner of Jethro Group. Bill, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. You, know, you actually run uh, two different businesses uh, you know, as part of your group. Can you tell me a bit about yourself and these businesses? Yep, absolutely. So um, uh, on the home front, um, I've got two young kids. Uh, I've got a two-year-old and an almost five-year-old. Uh, my wife, Sarah, and I sort of juggle their, uh, their, 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 their parent duties together. Um, Business-wise, uh, I have a cafe and a, and a wine bar. The cafe is a, a day operation, specialty coffee, uh, you know, eggs on toast and variations. And, and the wine bar is a natural wine bar with a, a, a bit of a foot in the old world cab as well. But, um, yeah, that's a wine drinking and takeaway shop. Um, so we're operational basically at 6.30 to 11.30 most days of the week. Um, so we try and balance that between that. The business is operating well on the kids and it's a, yeah. it's an interesting time. How do you, you know, approach that, you know, young family, two businesses, um, you know, what do you do to try and get as much balance as you can? Um, the, it's, it, I always end up skewing 
myself towards work, which I have to be really conscious of. I, I do make more of an effort to spend time with my kids than I do to spend time at work because that sort of comes by duty or naturally more so than it does actually to stay at home. Um, so it's a conscious thing that I do make sure that I get the, you know two days a week where I am at home uh, and, and commit myself to the kids all day. Obviously, I still take phone calls. I still have to email, et cetera. I'm not sort of the sort of person that's going to shut off everything. Um, life goes on in and around everything. And my kids know that as well. And they're very familiar with the fact that, you know, sometimes I have to just jump, jump in the car and, you know, scoot down to Richmond quickly to do a, a few uh, little errands. Um, yeah. So it's just familiarizing ourselves with that. But basically, I try to merge the lives a little bit. Um, you know, I don't really keep them separate. Um, uh, but at the same time, when I'm committed to something at home, I'm just, you know, focused on that and everything else can tend to wait or I find people around me that can actually, you know, help out. And I'm not, I'm not afraid to ask as well, which is really yeah. important, I think. And sort of communicating clearly, especially with your partner. My wife's really good with me in saying, look, you know, you've, you've been you've been too absent this last few days or, or you know, you, you, um, you're spending too much time. Not necessarily away from the family because I'm still here, but sometimes I'm not tuned in. I'm, sometimes yep. I'm just sitting on my phone or sitting on a laptop. So uh, when that happens, I really make an effort to actually uh, spend a whole day at home or spend a whole mm -hmm. day. Or if my kids are at daycare for a day, um, my wife and I go on a, on a lunch together or something. I mean, these little windows really make a big difference. Um, so it's not so much finding, a, uh, being content with finding a balance. It's a, a identifying when you haven't got the balance right and remedying it the other way. Yeah. And yeah. as I said earlier, the balance always tends to skew negatively towards work. So you always have to pull back and, and make sure you do prioritize family because I'm not sure that anyone has a work-life balance whether um, running businesses or have a successful job. Yeah, um, no, and, and, and they're spending too much time at home. I think it's always the other way around. Yeah, so, I have to um, agree. Yeah, so it's being, it's being conscious of the fact that you need to just um, yeah, scale back a little bit and, and then spend more time. And, and it, it's never to the detriment of, of the business because, like I said before, you have people involved there that know what they're doing. And if you have good business practices in place, you, I find myself feeling better if I trust the business more. Um, tend, things tend to be okay. Um, and if it's a serious issue, like something that needs to be remedied now, people around you know that you, you know, my wife will know, okay, look, this is serious. It needs to go right now. Um, which yep. is very rare. Generally speaking, things tend to, you know, to settle down and, and get and sort themselves out. Sometimes I'm working both, both jobs um, and there'll be an hour and a half window in between and I'll, I'll come home. I won't, I won't stay yep. at work. I won't, I won't get on the laptop and you know, do stuff, which I could probably do. I'll literally yep. come home. And if that means I'm home for 40 minutes, um, I'm not home for 40 minutes, I otherwise wouldn't have been. Guess, do you have any tools or tips that you use or you've learned from others when it comes to trying just to find some sort of balance in running a business? Finding the right people to work for you is super important. Um, there are people that work for you and the people that want to work for you and the people that want to work for the business and grow the business. Um, the ones in the latter category, are the ones that you really try to hold on to, um, they're the ones that will tend to uh, not come to you for minor issues and try to remedy the things themselves before they actually make that phone call or, or send that message. Um, so surrounding yourself with people that, that are, that are um, beneficial to the business and yourself is really, really important. It's hard to do. It, it takes time. But at, at the end of the day, it actually makes a big, big difference. Anyone can sell any commodity really, but the staff are what makes up the actual business. Since you realize that the staff make the business, what have you done to try and find the staff that really fit right for you and your business? I hire a lot on personality. I don't really hire on, on skill set. Um, there has to be some degree of skill involved and some some sort of um, background in the industry or, or passion for the industry. But when I'm when I'm um, discussing the the roles with people, um, I really try and delve into how they are and how they how they uh, function as people, mm -hmm. uh, how they respond to customer interaction, as opposed to how how well can you make a coffee. You know, coffee is obviously tricky and cooking has a lot of elements to it. But again, you know, we can, we can train these things up. So even if they're like the most skilled option, um, I think you get high more on personality. Yeah, I think it's definitely uh, something I take as well is uh, you can't teach passion or drive or self-awareness, but you can teach anything else. Mm. And you find that those people who have those things definitely make great, uh, great team members. Well, Bill, thank you so much for sharing some of your tips with us. I really appreciate it. No, no, thanks for having me.